Welcome to a new lecture on the binomial theorem. Uh, in this lecture, we will look at certain divisibility results uh, which can be derived based on the binomial theorem. Uh, so once again, our uh, recall the binomial theorem is given by x plus y the whole power n equals summation r equal to 0 to n, cr x power n minus r, y power r, where we use uh, cr to denote ncr. So to give you a flavor of the kind of results we'll be looking at today, uh, let's look at the first example, uh, which asks you to show that 3 power 2n plus 2 minus 8n minus 9 is divisible by 64 uh, when n is a natural number. It asks you to show that this uh, term is divisible by 64 for uh, natural numbers n. Uh, so at first sight, uh, there doesn't seem to be a binomial expansion you can apply uh, to generate this result. So we would like to create a binomial expansion to uh, derive this result. And so notice that you have, uh, you have an exponent here, but you also have some terms here, and these terms are in general, not divisible by 64 for n being natural numbers. So you can plug in certain natural numbers, and you can see that this, uh, this term, which is being subtracted from 3 power 2n plus 2, is not going to be divisible by 64. And so we would like to somehow get rid of these terms and leave the remaining term to be divisible by 64. Uh, so let's look at a way of re-expressing this term. 3 power 2n plus 2 minus 8n minus 9. Uh, can be written as uh, 9 power n plus 1, where I've just uh, taken a power of 2 uh, into 3 and written 3 squared as 9. And you still have minus 8n eight, eight minus 9. So now this looks a little more promising, because you have 9 power n plus 1, and you have a 9, and you have an 8n. So you can get rid of the 8n, potentially, by writing 9 as uh, 1 plus 8 raise this power n plus 1, and you have 8n minus 9. So this looks a little more promising. And now you have a term which you can expand using the binomial theorem. Uh, so let's try and expand this term. So this is nothing but n plus 1 c0 uh, times 1 power n plus 1 uh, plus n plus 1 c1 times 1 power n times 8 uh, plus uh, n plus 1 c 2, 1 power n minus 1, 8 square, and so on. So we'll, we'll be concerned about uh, the higher uh, order terms later. And we have, we're still subtracting 8 n and 9 from this term. So let's see how this simplifies to. Uh, so this is nothing but the first term is 1. The second term is n plus 1 uh, times 1 times 8. And the remaining terms can be uh, succinctly written as summation r equal to 2 to n plus 1, n plus 1 c r, 1 power n plus 1 minus r. and 8 power r. And you still have to subtract 8n and 9 from this expression. So this looks a little more promising, because you notice that these first two terms add up to exactly 8n plus 9. And so you can cancel these two terms. And so you're just left with summation r equal to 2 to n plus 1, n plus 1 c r. Uh, 1 power n plus 1 minus r is just 1, and you have 8 power r. So this is what we are left with. And we want to show that this is divisible by 64. So notice that the summation runs from r equal to 2. So let's rewrite this as summation r equal to 0 to n minus 1, n plus 1 c r plus 2, 
8 power r plus 2. So we've just used a change of indices to rewrite this summation. And notice that there's an 8 power 2 here. You can pull that out. This is going to be 64 times summation r equal to 0 to n minus 1, n plus 1 c r plus 2, 8 power r. So you have a 64 here, and you wanted to show that this term is divisible by 64, so that is good. So what we have to show is that this term is an integer. So that's all is um, that remains. So that term is clearly an integer because uh, you have a summation of several terms, where each term is uh, made up of two integers themselves. So 8 power r is an integer, and n plus 1 c r plus 2, again, is an integer. So we have summation of integers, and so this term is an integer. So we have that this uh, overall term is divisible by 64, uh, which is the desired result. So we've seen uh, an application of the binomial theorem where we somehow re-expressed our given term uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of an expression where from where we could use the binomial expansion and uh, derive a divisibility result. Uh, for the original term. So let's look at a second example. This example asks to show that 2 power 4n minus 2 power n times 7n plus 1 is divisible by 196 whenever n is a natural number. So this example is very similar to the previous one. And once again, we have to figure out how to rewrite this original term in a form which is amenable to the binomial expansion. So notice now that we want to show that this term is divisible by 196. And 196 is nothing but 14 square. And you have a 7 year and a 2 power n year, so that looks promising. So let's see what we can do. So 2 power 4n minus 2 power n times 7n plus 1 can be uh, rewritten as 16 power n minus 2 power n times 7n plus 1, where we just rewritten 2 power 4n as 16 power n. So now 16 uh, can somehow. Uh, be split into 14 and 2. Uh, so we can rewrite this as 2 plus 14 power n minus 2 power n times 7n plus 1. So this looks promising because now we have a 14 appear uh, in a binomial term. Uh, and we want to show that this whole term is still filled by 196, which is 14 squared. So let's go through the uh, motions again and use the binomial theorem show that this is nothing but nc0, 2 power n, 14 power 0, plus nc1, uh, 2 power n minus 1, 14 power 1, plus let's rewrite the higher order terms as summation r equal to 2 to n, ncr, 2 power n minus r, 14 power r. And we subtract the original 2 power n times 7n plus 1 from this expansion. So once again, you can rewrite this as uh, 2 power n plus n times 2 power n minus 1 times 14 plus summation r equal to 2 to n, ncr, 2 power n minus r, 14 power r. And you still have to subtract 2 power n times 7n plus 1. So this is nothing but uh, 2 power n plus n times 2 power n times 7, that I've factorized 14 as 2 times 7. And you have a resulting summation r equal to uh, 2 to n, and see r, 2 power n minus r, 14 power r. And you subtract 2 power n times 7n and a 2 power n, where I just expanded this term. So notice once again that you can cancel the first two terms with the terms being subtracted, and you're still left with, you're only left with 
the summation r equal to 2 to n, uh, and say r 2 power n minus r 14 power r. Now the arguments are uh, quite similar to the previous one, uh, previous example we've seen, so I won't go through this in detail. You can just rewrite this as 14 square times summation r equal to 0 to n minus 2 and c r plus 2 2 power n minus r minus 2 and 14 power where here you started with 2 power n minus 2, and so you're starting with uh, 2 power n minus 2 again. And here you started with 14 square, and here you start with 14 power 0, since I pulled out a 14 square here. So, so this is what we are left with. And notice that this summation again is an integer, and we have the summation being multiplied by 14 square, which is 196, which is again an integer. And we wanted to show that this term is divisible by 196. So that's exactly what we've shown since we factorized it into a form where we have a leading uh, coefficient of 14 square. Uh, and so we've once again shown that this term is divisible by 196 whenever n is a natural number. So let's look at a multiple choice question, which is uh, based on this flavor of problems. So the question asks you to show, uh, asks you uh, when pi power 99 uh, is divided by 13, uh, the remainder is, so it asks you to compute the remainder when pi power 99 is divided by 13. And the options are 8, 9, 10, and none of these. So this is a kind of problem where it's uh, hard to eliminate the options without actually solving the problem, uh, because uh, you have none of these uh, where uh, so even if you determine that this remainder is going to be even or odd, uh, you're not really sure whether which option it is since there's none of these and uh, even if the remainder is odd, you can't just conclude that the answer is 9. Uh, so you would actually have to uh, derive the result for this example. So let's see how you can rewrite pi, pi power 99 to obtain an amenable result. Uh, so to, to arrive at this, the solution, uh, let's try computing some powers of pi uh, to see where that gets us. So pi power 1 is pi, uh, which is quite far from 13, so it's not really much you can do about it. Uh, pi square is 25, which is close to a multiple of 13. 13 times 2 uh, is 26. So this looks promising. Uh, but pi power uh, 99 is not a direct power of, not an integral power of pi square. And so let's try this approach. Let's try it pi power 99 as pi times pi power 98. Okay. I've just factorized pi power 99 into a more suitable form. And now I can write this as pi times pi power, uh, pi square power 49. Uh, and since I know that pi square is close to a multiple of 13, this is nothing but pi times 26 minus 1 power 49, 26 is a multiple of 13, so the divisibility results are going to be fairly easy to derive. Uh, so this is nothing but phi times, and now you use the binomial expansion of 26 minus 1 whole power 49. Uh, so let's see how, how we can write this. It's like 49 C0 minus 1 power 49, 26 power 0. So I'm starting off with minus 1 power 49 and 26 power 0 since we're only concerned with uh, the power of 26, which is 0, since all other terms are going to be divisible by 13. So 
So and you have 49C1 minus 1 power 48, 26 power 1, uh, plus so on. So this is going to be the expansion of 26 minus 1, the whole power 49. And you have a leading term, which is phi uh, in this expression. So notice that all of these higher powers, as I mentioned, are going to be divisible by 13. And so since we only care about the remainder that this term leaves when divided by 13, we don't really care about these terms, which are exactly divisible by 13. So this is the only remaining term is going to give us um, the remainder when you divide 5 power 99 by 13. So let's see what that gives us. It's 5 times 49c0 is 1 uh, times minus 1 power 49 is minus 1 times 26 power 0 is 1. And so this gives us minus 5. So the remainder when 5 power 99 is divided by 13 is minus 5. Uh, for those of you who aren't used to this kind of notation, this might seem a little strange that you get a ne negative remainder. But to just get a positive remainder, you just add a multiple of 13. Since we've ignored so many multiples of 13, you get a negative number. But if you add a multiple of 13, you get 8. So the remainder uh, when 5 power 99 is divided by 13 is 8. For those of you who are familiar with uh, modular arithmetic, uh, you can notice that the approach we took is very similar to the approach you take uh, when, you use, uh, when you do such kinds of problems in number theory, where you try to get, uh, try to, uh, get at a power of 5, which is close to a multiple of 13, and you just used uh, remainder arguments where you ignored uh, terms which were multiples of 13. And so you, you're only left with one term since you only care about the remainder. Uh, so this is a sample of a problem which could uh, appear in an exam type situation where you're asked to derive a result based on the divisibility uh, of a term uh, by a natural number uh, using the binomial theorem. So that's it for this lecture. Hope you enjoyed watching this lecture. Uh, and in the next uh, lectures, we will look at uh, some example problems based on the binomial theorem. Uh, I thank you for your attention and hope you can join us next time.